okay i think many almost everybody joined and uh, we'll continue with that limb leads and the chest leads which were there okay so whatever the limb leads and chest leads just i showed you in the like previously one minute i'll show you one more time okay so these are nothing the 12 leads which you just saw now they are nothing like the cameras okay cameras like they are the ones which will determine the wave form okay starting the first ecg which wave which we drew and we discussed like why that wave is being formed why that p wave comes and all we discussed it taking two as a standard okay taking two as a standard lead what we drew is there we drew a one ecg wave like this and we discussed all the mechanisms why this have been formed okay like this each wave like one avl avr each of them they form their own wave forms okay they are like each of them are like a galvanometer connected taking that as a axis of the heart okay for example we'll take this as your cardiac like like this we have okay if we have like this so this is going to detect the, take the baseline as cardiac axis like this this is going to take cardiac axis like this this is going to take cardiac axis like this lead 3 is taking cardiac axis like this and avr is going to take like this okay for example if this you have got see here avr and lead 2 almost this is avr lead and this is your lead 2 so almost they are pointing at opposite direction so what do you expect now this is getting all the positive wave means avr will be like p wave will be negative then qrs also will be negative and t wave also should be negative something like that okay both are pointing at opposite direction this is how the cardiac activity is being like uh, what is it seen by different leads from different angle that is how so what happens is your uh, leads placement how are you going to do is if this is your cardiac axis on the frontal plane this is okay frontal plane what we have is we have got a limb leads we have got in limb leads we have got three numbered leads one two and three and we have got augmented limb leads like avl for left limb avr for right limb and avf for foot okay these are augmented limb leads a is for augmented okay these are the extra limb leads which we have so we are also going to give numbers or angles to them okay this is zero this is your 90 degree this is your 180 degree and this is your 210 no no sorry sir 270 so based on this we are going to uh, put the angles here and uh, based on that we are going to have numberings also here so this is your lead one 60 is 0 degree and here this one 90 degree we are going to put it for put okay a v yeah and this we are putting at lead 2 here this will make it at 60 degree this will make it at 90 degree okay then lead 1 2 and then we are having here lead 3 this we are going to put it as 120 degree then we are going to put here at 210 degree i think sorry for i got confused here this is 210 degree which we are going to put it as a this here we will put it as av l and this will put it as av r so av l is minus 30 degree and this will put it as plus 210 degree this is your 180 degree here okay then we have got 210 degree this is minus 90 degree okay this is your basic like plus degree plus 90 minus 90 0 and 180 so here you are 180 degree if this is minus 30 like that you can come here as minus 90 okay like you can come here at minus 180 also this will be like minus 150 if you take like that if you come like this it will be plus 210 if you come like this it will be minus 150 so like this we are going to put the angles and numbering this is very important because if you don't remember this part then we have some numerical problems to solve based on the ecg here none of them will be able to solve so again one more time we will draw this this is the frontal axis which we have this is your one this is your lead to then this is your lead 3 okay we have got foot here avf then we have got avl then we have got avr okay again i am telling this minus 30 this is plus 210 or minus 150 then this is 0 and this is 60 and this is 90 then this is 120 so if you are not able to remember this then i'll you take 2 minutes time you draw by yourself and remember this 
because based on this only we are going to solve so many of the problems now. Next numerical problems which are there, we'll solve on this only. Okay. Based on this, we are detecting something called as axis of the heart or the main cardiac electrical axis. We are going to find it. Based on this, we have also something called as left axis deviation, right axis deviation, normal axis deviation, then we have got extreme axis deviation. Okay. I'll show one diagram is there. I'll show you it. Where is that? Huh. See, this is the one which I was telling you people. Okay. So, this is your AV, L which we have here. To some people take it 90 also. Some books give 90. Some books have to take 100. So, if the main cardiac axis lies in this range, then we will call it as normal electrical axis of the heart. If the predominant electrical axis goes from plus 100 to plus 180, then it is right axis. Minus 30 to minus 90 is called as left axis. And this is called extreme axis or also called as northwest axis deviation. Northwest axis. Because your Gujarat, Rajasthan all comes in the northwest of India, something like that you can remember. So if you put an India map here like this, if you put Gujarat here, something India here, then it comes in northwest. So we come to, we put it as northwest axis deviation also. So this is the basis for which we are going to now discuss. Okay. Now you should be perfect with these numbers and your location of the leads which you have put. And now we'll come to the chest leads. So what are the chest leads going to detect? See, what I said is, this one, if you take heart like this, then it is going to detect the axis, like this is one axis, this is one axis, this is one axis. Now what we'll do is, this is on the longitudinal basis, okay? On the cross-sectional basis, we'll take like, this is your heart now, which are the two ventricles are situated like this, this is your interventricular septum, okay? Now the chest leads are taking the photograph or the heart's activities on different axis like V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. So they are going to detect the electrical activity of the heart, like how the depolarization is acting or how the, how the repolarization is happening, all those based on the sideways, okay? That is the cross-sectional images. It has, it is like these the leads will take the cross-sectional images, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. Where are you going to place these leads, sir? Here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we are going to take it a Louis angle you are going to mark, then you are going to take the fourth intercostal space you are going on the left side one, two, in the fourth, okay. Then in the fifth intercostal space in the mid axil, mid clavicular line, you are going to take a V4. Between V2 and V4, you are placing the V3. V5 in the anterior axillary line and V6 in the mid axillary line. So this is in the, these three in the fifth intercostal space. This is in the fourth intercostal space. This also in the fourth intercostal space. V3 is between V2 and V4. This is how the leads are going to place it on the chest. Okay. For this limb leads, no? What I told you. One, two, three, AVL, AVR, and AVF. We don't have six like this. Okay. We don't have six leads like this because three are augmented here. One, two, three. I told you three are augmented limb leads are there. So what we do for augmented limb leads is these are the calculated limb leads. Okay. These are not having actually. So what we do is we have only four wires which we connect to the legs and hands. Okay. With this only we'll come to know. With this we have got something called as right arm, then right foot, then left arm and left foot. We have got four in this. So one of them will be taken as ground. Okay, this is all again the basic of electrophysiology. So what we'll do is we'll connect the four leads to the legs. Okay, with these four leads only, we are going to get the six lead information. So this is again basis of physiology, electrophysiology, basis of the physiological basis of ECG. So we'll not remember much. We have four leads for limbs and we have got six for the chest. Connecting wires are 10. Okay, connecting wires are 10, but the ECG which we get are 12. That much if you remember, it's more than enough. So this is the different activity of the chest leads which are taken. So what happens is, for example, if you take this now, uh, heart here, so these are the two ventricles which are there. So V1 and V2 will almost most of the time what happens is it will detect the right-sided ventricle as well as like little bit of septum, small amount of septum. So this RV and this is septum which comes here. So here V1, V2 which are there, no? which will usually detect the activity of some amount of RV as well as slight amount of septum. Then V3, V4, V5, V6. Okay, V3, V4, V5, V6. 
this will detect most of the activity of your lv left ventricular activity so some changes are there you can v1 and v2 you can tell like it is due to something due to septum or right ventricular problem is there if it is v3 v4 v5 v6 you can tell uh, there is some problem regarding your left sided ventricular free wall problem is there like that you can identify for example if the patient is having predominant avl elevation is there like very big waves are there in avl now so what will tell like okay there is lot of myocardium here which is giving a big electrical potential this side so it is coming like this okay now the patient is having a avf is very predominant lead is there like in the leads then it means something there is a strong electrical component which is coming like this and it is pulling like this okay something like that so we will come next for the activity see now we will take for the uh, we will finish this one and we will go for the solving the problems now see what is going to happen here is see v1 and v2 i told you no, some amount of this is right ventricle and septum it is going to cover v3 v4 v5 v6 is covering mainly the left sided ventricle it is covering okay this rv and this is your lv now what happens is see here v1 whatever is there and v6 these are like a cameras okay see whatever is happening here v1 here the rv is also getting depolarized okay here rv is getting the camera is detecting this side okay this is the electrical axis which the camera is like, like the your galvanometer is placed along this axis now what is happening is because the electrical activity is coming like this you are getting a small positive wave here okay this first positive wave which you got but because there is a lot of myocardium on this side okay all of this the current also should flows on the opposite direction right so this will eventually overcome this one okay and this is totally bigger than v1 so what happens you are getting a big negative wave here now taking the same one here v6 okay so this is your uh, v6 is the placing like this and then your v1 is like this okay initially what happens is as it is like because it is very far away here this this is the point where the activity is coming into the cardia myocardium it is entering here so as soon as it enters it is going to slightly spread to the right ventricle here first it is spreading here that's why you are getting a small negative wave in the v1 here okay this sorry v6 small v6 we are discussing right see v6 small then because there is a large amount of myocardium which is there and v6 is also facing like this we are getting a big positive wave here this is little bit into like complicated electrophysiology if you are not understanding then the another easy way is you can just remember it like from v1 to v6 what happens is there is a small positive wave in v1 here first okay there is a small positive wave in the v1 here which is slowly becoming bigger and bigger by the time it is v6 that much you can remember otherwise here see this is a small positive wave here this is going to be changed slowly into a bigger positive wave here this big negative wave which is there here it is going to become a small negative wave here okay this much you can remember otherwise if you want me to explain one more time i'll explain see message me what you want to do okay sir explain one more time huh? sir does axis deviation say anything which side of the heart is involved i'll tell that okay uh explain see here what is there is little bit it is complicated i don't know how much i'll be able to make you understand sorry here what is there is see in the v1 we will consider now v1 and this impulse like this wave why it is formed okay so v1 is a camera which is going to face the uh, anterior part of the chest along the rv it is facing okay see it is too much complicated into the anatomy like where the bundle branch are passing which is a first twig which is coming out that time i told like like that same way so what is going to happen is first it is going to spread impulse along this part and it is coming like this this is the actual impulse which is going to spread initially it is going to spread little bit into the inter uh, ventricular septum is the first thing to be depolarized then your lv and rv goes like that time we discussed in the first slides okay same way what is going to happen in the cross sectional view is because the electrical activity is traveling from the posterior like mid posterior part to anterior part it is coming like this okay traveling 
because of that what happens v1 will first detect the ventricular rv depolarization is first happening here slightly that will cause a slight positive wave first okay but because there is a lot of myocardium on this side also which is also to be depolarized the effective power is like for example here you are getting a 5 millivolt of current is generated because of depolarization of rv you are getting a 25 millivolt of current which is generated due to velv depolarization which is more huge see this much of current is going for depolarization like this but your v1 is facing something like this both are almost like opposite direction like okay because of that you are going to get a predominantly a negative wave in the v1 the same way is going to happen with v6 also what is v6 happening v6 is facing like this which is along the majority of the lv myocardium so as a, along the 25 millivolt current only it is facing okay as we discussed like this but v1 is faced like this which is around the 5 millivolt current okay now exactly this ulta is going to happen in this see just see this one because this is small one which has been formed due to rv and it was v1 was facing towards right ventricular side that's why you got a positive here now v1 is again facing the same 5 millivolt only but it is along the against the v6 so it is getting a small negative wave which was due to v1 was positive like for because of rv rv which was giving positive 5 millivolt that is now facing against the axis of v6 so you are getting a negative wave here and positive wave which you have got here it is the exactly replica here so this negative wave which you have got in v1 no it was due to activity of your 25 millivolt here that 25 millivolt only is getting coming here as positive here this is the little complicated thing otherwise you can still remember it in one more way if you want is you can just remember it like here the positive wave which is there and here the negative wave which is there these two are the activity of your right ventricle and this negative wave and this positive wave okay this x which i have put this is the activity of your lv so this small positive wave in v1 and small negative wave in v6 these are the activity of rv now lv activity is by this one and this one okay see so if you just observe this ecg now of the waveforms and with one of the very important concept we have how do you explain the negative wave in v6 that only that negative wave in v6 is due to activity of rv anand hegde asked how do you explain negative wave in v6 okay that one only i am telling this negative wave in v6 is due activity of rv which has been there because v1 activity is facing like this v6 is facing like this and the cardia are situated like this so axis is going everywhere like this okay this negative is depicted this this wave form which is there this is a v1 which is negative and this is which is a positive this is like this so this is a negative this one not come here sorry so this is the activity which you have got so this part of activity is by this one and this big activity is by v6 if you are not understanding uh, i don't know how more like how better i can explain but one more thing in which you can understand this one is like what is the main concept which we have here is why i told all this is in one more way i'll try to explain you people this is the one wave which you are going to see here this it is something like this going upward like this okay waves are transforming like from negative wave to they are becoming more of a predominantly a positive wave so why this is happening is so why this is happening is because this v1 which is there and this all negative was there no this was due to the activity of lv and this is also the activity of lv only because the v6 is taking the side of lv only it is coming positive v1 is taking the side of your rv because of that lv activity was negative so this is something called as normal progression of r wave this is very important normal progression of r wave so that is slowly the negative wave should go on increasing to become the positive wave that is normal r wave progression this is most important for detecting your most of the important pathology see here this is negative slight negative negative is becoming less 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 and finally there is no negative wave here at all here this was a positive wave which is going on increasing to positive so this is a, something like wave forms are increasing like if you go on taking the waves like negative 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 goes on becoming positive 
so this is the change which you are having so this is called as progression of r wave normal progression of r wave so what is the importance of this one in case of myocardial infarction there is a very important indication here see what we will do is we will take that same diagram here i think you people will understand now i think it will be more like applied basis so this is your interventricular septum here this is your lv which is there lv is bigger and rv is smaller okay this is your rv this is your lv now what is there what we told is your v6 is showing about all the activity of your positive wave in the left ventricle okay and like we will take this one as v1 here so what was the normally how it has to be formed normally this was this was the v1 wave form and this was the v6 wave form which we had here okay this was the normal wave form now this much of myocardium is infarction is there this much is not at all contracting now this is dead myocardium only this is working this is working now so what happens is see that time we discussed this was the activity which was shown by lv right in v1 so this was a v1 so what happens in v1 now because of this myocardial infarction this becomes small and the, because this is overruling now because this one has become like for example this was 25 and this was 5 because everything has been dead now 20 has been dead now like 15 is dead now this is dead part we have got only 10 here so now this is 5 here so what is there now rv is becoming strong and it is overruling with electric current so almost it is like equal see this positive wave was due to your lv activity only now because this much is z what we have here in v6 small one but negative wave is predominating so see here, here also we have a negative wave here also we have a negative wave so what is there the normal progression of r wave is lost here so how should have the normal ecg been for example if you take so this was the like sorry so this was bigger negative wave then slowly less then less then bigger bigger and like this it is it's not that low so deep small only okay like this this was the axis which we had for normal okay because this is also by lv this is also by LV because there is an infarction on the lateral side. This also and this also will be small. Now what happens infarction? This will be small, small, small. This will be bigger. This will be slightly bigger, slightly bigger. So this normal progression is lost. So this one is gone. So if you see this one here, for example, If this much of myocardium is dead, this is not working properly. So the V6 which was giving this much of positive wave will not be there. So V6 becomes smaller. V5 also so much of it is dead we will think. So now this also becomes smaller. But negative wave is due to, this negative wave is due to your RV, right? This is due to RV. So that negative wave will be there. So see, this negative wave will be again there. Now this negative wave, again it is due to RV, this is due to positive, again this has reduced. So it will be smaller. Now this one, V3, V3, in this V3 what is it? It's almost biphasic. But this biphasic what is it? This positive wave is due to upper one. So this will be again smaller. Now here, this will be again very small. Like this one. And this V6 was like bigger one, like almost biphasic. So this normal shape with which the increasing size was there, this is lost. So that can tell you about there is a lateral wall infarction. Lateral wall MI is there. That's why you are not having a normal progression of your R wave. So one ECG I'll show you that will make you very clear here. One minute I'll show. I think I have a next. See here, V2, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. Actually, as per this one, see here, this one was having big negative wave, negative, negative, negative. Where is the positive wave? It is not going up only, right? Positive wave should have come as per that our 
graph what is there the negative wave goes on increasing to become a positive wave right this is not getting positive here so as per that how much deep here it is there the same amount of positive wave should be there like this see here negative 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 started become positive 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 see this ccg see this ccg so here the lateral leads are small v6 are small chota it signifies that there is a lateral wall infarction here see negative to positive it is almost having a normal progression so this is the normal ecg which we have here so there is a no mi in the lateral wall you can just tell it it could be there could be mi and all so this is the importance for your lateral chest leads okay so these are the normal chest leads which you have here you have negative 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 started becoming positive 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 so this negative to positive is most important and this is called as normal progression of r wave and it is important for you people to identify any pathology in the lateral side of the chest leads it is there or not there so this is how as i said you just now in the diagram i showed you so many nicely like this images and all i told like this the progression should occur this is the diagrammatic representation okay but whatever the ecg i showed you just people in this now like not this one like few moments back we saw the ecg is totally different only that's why i told it is something like anatomy the natural book shows you all the different types of nerves muscles different different colors everything but when you open up in the body or in the surgery it will be totally different something like the ecg sir also you will understand so many times when you are seeing some diagrams like this this is the graphical representation you will see oh so nicely the waves are visible but when you in reality when you see the ecg it won't be like that okay so this is the ecg and this is the point which we call it something called transition of the waves this is a transition see here, this negative has become suddenly now bigger positive so this is called as transition if it occurs between v3 and v4 it is called as normal transition sometimes there is a transition between v2 v3 only some form v4 v5 this is called early transition this is called late transition there are so many important significance of that i think for your level it is not at all required i think for empty level only it is required we will not go into much detail regarding that so this one we saw about the axis of the heart so we will now start calculating the axis of the heart which is most important because we should know about right axis deviation right ventricular hypertrophy left axis deviation left ventricular hypertrophy all these things we should know that's why we'll go with the axis of the heart now okay this is the ecg now and uh, we'll go back to our own the diagram this is your 1 this is your 2 this is your 3 this is your avl then this is your avf then this is your av sorry this is your avr this is your avf okay now see here we'll go one by one as i said we'll go back to that same old concept again this is a and b point are there if the current is going there will be a positive wave if the current is coming like this it will be a negative wave if the current is going like this or like this it is a biphasic wave anybody have any doubt in this concept then only we'll go ahead otherwise i'll clear now only once again i want message anybody if any doubt here now only you tell me otherwise we'll stop here and finish and go no doubt ah huh? we'll go ahead okay see here now seeing this wave okay everybody said go ahead see now this wave see here this lead one is showing r and s almost they are biphasic right equal positive and equal negative so lead one so this is the lead one and it is showing biphasic wave so biphasic wave is something like this so the current is either going up or the current is either going down okay so we will now think current is like this or current is like this understood here i think everybody understood this much now we will come to lead two lead to showing predominantly a positive wave so the current may be going like this lead 3 is also showing a positive wave current is going something like this then so avr avr is showing predominantly negative wave so current could be not going like this current is going like this opposite to it avl is there now avl is also showing negative wave so where is avl here so it could be again current is not going towards avl it is going something like this okay 
so taking these three into account current is either going like this or this as per one as per two it is going like this as per three it is going like this and as per avr it is going like this as per avl it is going like this avf is last it is also showing like this okay now your basic puc vector comes here if the current is going like this or like this the summation will be like this something okay so current is going like this like this and like this this is by phase secret this can be or cannot be both so we will not take this so this is the activity so the actual current axis is going avf so this is the main axis of the heart now electrical axis of the heart is going like this this is the answer anybody has any doubt in this how did we calculate this We will take the same ECG see here again. R and S is showing biphasic, so your R and S is showing biphasic in lead one. So current is going like this or like this. R is positive in lead two, so like this. Three is positive like this. AVR is negative, so it is going somewhere like this, like this, like this. Then your AVL is also negative. It is going like this, like this. Okay. then avf is positive so predominantly everything is going on the downward so 1 2 3 4 5 all summation together going to avf so this is the axis of the heart as we discussed this one is called as normal axis of the heart this is right axis this is your left axis this is your northwest axis or extreme axis so the axis of the heart of this person is normal somebody answer this one if you have pen and paper you solve there only meanwhile you know, i also will be solving here so one is positive that's going like this two is biphasic so it is either going like this or like this and 3 is negative so 3 is like this means it is going like this so avr is negative here so avr is negative means it is something going like this avl is positive so this is like this avf is again negative so something like this so the direction is approximately here so the direction is like avl and 1 see here now we can go it with with more accurate okay left axis deviation is correct okay left it is going fine now see the axis number 1 and now axis avl okay shit something happened i don't know okay now here uh, what is there is avl and 1 so both are almost like this one only but see can any one any one of these is bigger than 1 avl and 1 if you take which is bigger in this i think avl is slightly bigger so most probably that goes more near avl you see the answer yes it's not 1 why it is not going to 1 why it is going to avl sir screen sharing is absent hold oh, up one second something happened i did not understand what happened actually mm. no it's coming sir okay uh, actually in this one if you see avl and 1 i think avl is slightly bigger than 1 i think two or three points chota small small boxes so because of that i think the x is goes for avl and it is avl okay then third this one homework like like now only who will do and if possible tell me the correct degree also where it comes somebody Degree, degree. Which degree it comes to? 
we know 0 degree 60 degree 90 degree between 2 and avf okay 60 normal normal to okay anybody doubt 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 nobody has like anybody has not understood and i am ready to explain one more time here with one more diagram nobody will go ahead huh? answer is here 60 actually somebody answered like it could be between 60 and 2 okay like somebody was answering it could be somewhere here that is also possible we got to see see 2 and avf i think 2 is slightly bigger than avf i think most probably that's why he has given answer as 2 otherwise if you very closely if you just look at it both appear same size means it will come somewhere in between okay next this one which degree it comes to minus 150 somebody said 270 Simple, we will draw this one. We will not take, see these two are positive, no? So either the current is going AVL or it is going AVR. So this is either AVL or AVR. Either of the two it is going. Now we will go for the negative one which is there. See here, AVF is negative, 3 is negative, 2 is negative. So again current is going here, here somewhere. So it should be central. Minus 90. Somebody answered minus 90, it is correct dot one two i don't know who is that minus 270 and minus 120 i don't know like 270 somebody answered like how 270 i don't know like this is a 270 i think he might have put as answer somebody put minus 120 somewhere here it is minus 120 may be acceptable because i have to calculate like which is bigger i think avl is slightly bigger means it will come this much if avr is slightly bigger it will go a little like this okay somehow the answer is like this now next this one Minus 30, 75, yeah, 75 to plus 75, minus 75. Yeah, 270, you can take it as minus 90, but always uh, like mention it, whatever it is, okay? Somebody said 75 plus 75. Plus 75 means down like this, okay? Convention wise, this is plus 75. If you go like this, it is minus 75. Okay, we'll see the answer. This is minus 90. This is minus 60. Plus 75, somebody answered. It will come here. Then somebody answered minus 75. That will come here. Minus 75 is not a bad answer. It is a correct answer. Maybe you, you might have calculated uh, regarding the one and